Hey guys, Josh Holford back with another video and today we're talking about something I know a lot of you are interested in, which is investing in real estate. Time to think like an investor. When I was 18, I went out and bought my first rental property. And the reason I did that is because I had always read books like Rich Dad, Poor Dad, which talk a ton about investing in real estate and the kinds of financial opportunities and the passive income you can receive from an investment like that. You know, there's plenty of different types of investments. There's all sorts of things you can do, but real estate is really one of the most popular ones. It's one of the things that you come across over and over when you're starting to learn about these things. For me, the, the, the captivating idea with rental property was the immediate cash flow. If you can find a property that's a reasonable price with reasonable expenses and you can charge a decent rental rate for it, not only do you get some you know, appreciation in the value of the property and maybe over time you're paying the property down, you also have this immediate upfront cash flow, maybe a couple hundred bucks a month, 300, 400, $500 a month from a property that can just kind of go towards your lifestyle or money that you can reinvest. There were a few challenges, obviously. Being really young, I didn't have a high enough income that I could float the property myself. And things like being able to actually get a loan, getting a loan, you know, required a cosigner. I had to actually get my dad to help me co-sign to actually get a loan at that age. So those were a few of the things that I bumped into, but overall the experience has been eye-opening to say the least. I've learned a ton, but it's also actually been a really good investment. You know, relative to a lot of the investments I've made, property is one of those things that has the ability to um, multiply or provide an immediate growth in equity that isn't available elsewhere. So I thought instead of just talking about rental property in the office, you know, the first property I bought is only five minutes away from here. So why don't we go check it out? We are on the way to a property that I own in Winnipeg's West End. And we're going to be talking a little bit more about, you know, what the process was like of buying a rental property in the first place. Um, when I bought this, I was probably 18, 19. That was 2014. So yeah, it's been almost uh, six, six full years already. Um, it was crazy getting like my first renewal statement in the mail where I had to renew a five-year mortgage. That was wild because it was like, wow, it goes by really fast. Um, but yeah, when I was buying this, it was, I mean, I was young. Like, uh, it was definitely over an overextension. <laughs> if, if there's one piece of advice I give to people now, it's that, hey, like you should, before you buy a rental property, you should probably make sure you can float it yourself. You know, even if you're, uh, you know, if there's one or two months where the property is vacant and you can't float the property yourself, it's pr pretty damaging. Like it can hurt you pretty bad. So I was in a position where I couldn't do that. I couldn't afford to float it. So it brought a lot of stress. And, you know, there was a lot of different things I had to do. For instance, I was so young, I couldn't get a loan on my own. So I had to have my dad co-sign. Um, you know, there were all sorts of things where there was just hiccup after hiccup. But, you know, eventually we got it done. And uh, yeah, we still have it today. It cash flows and it's doing its thing there. And you know, I haven't been there in a couple days, so we'll see if there's a mess, but uh, we will uh, we'll show you guys what that looks like. Oh man, <laughs> you guys are getting a candid video here. Oh my goodness, I was here two weeks ago and none of that was there. <laughs> Whoopsie. Are your tenants growing crops outside? Yeah, it might be. That looks like, honestly, it looks like Oh man, that's horrible. Okay, well, this is what being a landlord is like, guys. <laughs> you know what to say, this is just nuts. Well, you know, they talk about real estate being passive income and this is not gonna be passive this week because I'm gonna have to take care of it. But this is actually really beautiful. What are these called? Flowers? <laughs> I don't know, they're purple though, they're nice. Well, here we are, guys. This uh, was the property I bought when I was, yeah, 18 or 19. I bought it in 2014. It's a duplex, so it's got, you know, tenants up top and then tenants below. And obviously it needs a little bit of yard work, but yeah, obviously like a really old West End home. The funny thing is this was actually built in 1895. It's a long time ago. But one really cool thing about this property too is that I was really excited about was the fact that there's commercial in the back. So what that means is the city and the province actually has vested interest in keeping this all clear. But as you can see, not your typical beautiful driveway, but hey, it works for this. Um, so yeah, I bought this for about, you know, $183,000. Um, you know, it was actually originally listed at 200, you know, wasn't selling, wasn't selling. I like the property, you know, the foundation was great. You know, it was diversified because it was a duplex kind of deal. And uh, the funny thing is there was a big garage here. And about a week before I started going into the purchase process, some people came along and lit the entire garage on fire. So we kind of almost backed out of the deal. 
and the realtor essentially said, okay, well, they want the property gone, so maybe we can come in a little bit lower. And uh, it went from 200 to 183 because the garage burnt down. And you can see right there by the garbage bin that uh, the fence totally caught fire as well, which we haven't taken care of yet, but yeah. This is uh, this is what it looks like. I did a bunch of work. You know, me and my my dad actually together did a, did a lot of work on the inside of the property. We also like demolished an entire garage that was here. We redid kitchens, redid bathrooms, and the recent appraised value is about two hundred and fifteen thousand to two hundred and twenty thousand. So right there, you know, just from owning the property for four to five years, we got it from you know one eighty. 183 to 215 to, to 220. So um, there's definitely about 30 to 40,000 ish there that just comes in equity from you know improving the home and that sort of thing. I feel like it's reasonable to not see your property every two weeks, but this is what happens when I didn't see mine for two weeks. So we're gonna have to take care of some of that. The reason I bought that duplex in particular was because you know I'd been doing a lot of shopping. I was looking at the market, I, was, I looked at all sorts of houses but there was a lot of things that were really important to me. I wanted to make sure that I wasn't getting in over my head with anything that needed way too much work. We did do some updates, but there was nothing like foundation work. Like the foundation was solid. The roof wasn't falling apart. The big structural issues in the house were good. And that was one of the main things I wanted to make sure I wasn't gonna have to deal with on my first rental property. Now, some things did happen, which we'll talk about in a later video. We've had scenarios where, you know, we had tenants flushing massive items down the toilets. Anyways, that's for another video. I bought the property because it just ticked all the boxes in terms of something I could get up and running really quickly right away and, and have it cash flow, which was really the biggest thing is I bought a property that was well below market value, got a really good deal on it. And I believe the reason I did is because the home was old and it was built 125 years ago. So that's the reason I looked at that particular property, but you know, I want to give you a look in the numbers. You know, what does this property actually yield me? What kind of investment is it? Well, one thing to know is that to get it all up and running, it probably cost me about $40,000. I needed a 20% down payment and we wanted to put in some additions as well, you know, fix some things up, make it look nicer so that it was, you know, had a higher value for rent. So about $40,000 to $50,000, I would say went into the property in total and what does that get me every month? Well, on a monthly basis, I'm renting it out for about $1,800. So $1,800 flows to me every month. That's everything. That's utilities, that's uh, the rent, you know, all the revenue I receive. Now, what comes off of that? Well, the first and biggest expense is the mortgage. So about $700 comes off for the mortgage. Um, the next biggest expense is property taxes. So about $200 every month goes to paying property taxes. Next would be utilities. So obviously we have to heat the place. We have to make sure that there's running water and electricity and all those things. That costs about 150 to 200, depending on the month. Um, in Canada, in the winter, it gets freezing cold. So we have, you know, the utilities prices kind of skyrocket over winter and then really settle down in the summer. And then lastly, we have things like insurance for hundred bucks a month in cable. At the end of the day, the property costs me about $1,200 a month to run. So with 1,800 in revenue and 1,200 in expenses, we cash flow about $600 a month. And if you multiply that by 12, it's about $7,200 a year. You do have to fix things. You do have to do routine maintenance. Every now and then there's a big fix you have to take care of. So I would easily budget in about $1,000 a year for that, which brings us to about 6,000 to 6,200 bucks a year that that property brings me. So when we compare to other types of investments like investing in the stock market or starting your own business or whatever it might be, we wanna know what the rate of return is. So if we take you know, the net income the property provides me, around 6,200, and we divide it by the cash that was required to start this investment, about $50,000, we get a rate of return of about 12.4%. And you know, 12.4 is a really good rate of return, especially for an investment that's so stable. You know, if we look at a similar investment, you know, you could think of small cap stocks, really small companies probably return about 11 or so percent over the course of history. Now, with the rental property, the reason you can get such great returns, and this is the biggest lesson with, with property, the reason you can get such great returns on property is leverage. Leverage is the reason real estate's a great investment. If the bank wasn't willing to give you a loan for 80% of the property value, real estate investing really wouldn't be that attractive. That's just the case. But because the bank is so willing to 
do a deal where we put up 10 to 20% of the money as a down payment and they finance the rest, that magnifies our return by five or 10 times. So all in all, the experience has been very eye-opening. I've learned a lot of things. I've learned about dealing with tenants. I've learned what it is that really makes a property run well. And there's been a lot of hiccups and a lot of things that have gone really well. And there's been times where I was super happy I made this decision and there was times where I was very regretful that I made this decision. But all of that to say, we're gonna be talking a lot more about investing in real estate and how you might do that and what might be the best way to do that. So if you guys feel like you're getting value from these videos and you're learning, thank you so much for supporting them. Please hit the like button, subscribe, turn on post notifications for more videos just like this every single week. Thank you.